I spend a lot of time looking at ears, at the outside of ears and the inside. I look at the red ears and gunky ears, ears filled with wax and uh, have redness on the outside. How, how we know an ear do a dog has an ear infection is he might shake his head and he might paw at his ear because it's irritated and inflamed. There might be a foxtail in there, a piece of a plant. It could be that there's a tick in there. Or more commonly, it could be that it's inflamed and red and be fr by the accumulation of wax and the overgrowth of yeast and bacteria. It causes the ear to get very really inflamed and red and the wax provides a great place for the bacteria and yeast to grow and continue causing the pain. So what we usually do to find out what is in there in dogs with repeated ear infections or real gunky ears, we make a slide. The slide is heated gently to get the wax to adhere, the cells to adhere to the slide. And then the slide is put into various stains to show the type of things we see here, which is an overgrowth of yeast. And as you know, in humans, yeast can cause itching and burning. The same thing with dogs. The overgrowth of these little foot footprint shaped critters can cause itching and burning in the ears. And also if those same footprints are joined with little round bacteria called cocci, the, the burning and inflamed red ears can get worse and need different medicine. And especially if those are joined in cases of repeated ear infections, sometimes the pseudomonas will get in there, they're rod-shaped bacteria, and they'll overgrow and they need another, they need a different medication than the yeast and sometimes the cocci. It's real important to clean the dog's ear to get the gunk out in order to make sure the medicine gets to rest against the clean skin of the ear in order to fight the bacteria in the yeast and doesn't get, get hung up in the gunk. So we flush the ear several times with an ear cleaner. Uh, we have one that's effective against yeast and that was most what this dog's problem was so we're going to use that as Fido Vet Cat. There's also a Duoxo ear flush that's great and actually provides some uh, nutritive oils to the skin. So anyway, uh, it's good, important to clean that ear out. Uh, sometimes just a maintenance of twice a week is good for ears that tend to get dirty all the time and have frequent infections. But if your dog doesn't show any problems, don't just put ear wash in there because if it's not broke, don't fix it. Once we get all the wax out, we're going to use Claro, which has an antibiotic, an antifungal, and a steroid. And we'll coat the ear canal and the eardrum and last for two weeks so we're going to put that in there and it'll firm up and harden up a little bit and coat that ear it comes kind of like a gel and uh, instead of torturing the dog for two weeks we just do that once the dog's ear is really commonly inflamed and infected many breeds of little white shizus and poodles have too much hair in the ears are are affected by pollens and molds these days, uh, there's a drug called Apoquil that may help with that. Labs have a real tendency to get ear infections due to food allergies uh, to wheat and beef and chicken. And I usually recommend a fish and potato, a venison and potato, or rabbit and potato for those dogs. Also remember, if, you, if your dog is allergic and you want to do a limited ingredient diet, you have to feed just that one food like fish and potato, but you can't feed them also biscuits and treats. You have to get a fish treat or a rabbit treat or a venison treat. Just don't go to the store and buy begging strips or any of those poisonous, not poisonous, but they're allergy causing treats. You have to just feed one food or ingredient for about 30 to 60 days to see if it makes a difference. And a lot of times skin problems and ear problems will clear up. That's what I wrote my Dog Diet Answer book about. I have a section that talks about limited ingredient diets and how you treat dogs with skin allergies and ear allergies. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed it. There's more to come on ears. I'm going to make, uh, in the next week or so, I'm going to make some more videos about ear types of ear infections that you can see and so you get a better handle on it. Have a great day.